Sound, Part One. Production and propagation of sound. In this video, we will get an introduction to production and propagation of sound. From the sound of the birds chirping to the sound of the running vehicles, we are surrounded by various sounds. Sound is a form of energy which travels through a medium and creates a sensation of hearing in our ears. We studied earlier that energy can neither be created nor be destroyed. It can only be changed from one form to another. When you clap your hands, a sound is produced. Can you tell which energy is converted to sound energy in this case? Do you know if we need energy to produce sound or not? Or how sound is transmitted? Now let us take a few simple examples to find answers to these questions. Take a tuning fork and a rubber pad. Hit one of the prongs of the tuning fork on the rubber pad to set the fork on vibration. Now bring the tuning fork close to your ear and then touch one of the prongs of the tuning fork with your fingers. What did you hear? And how did you feel about touching the prongs of the tuning fork? In the previous examples, we produced sound by setting the object on vibration. Can sound be produced without vibrating an object? Vibration sets an object in a rapid to and fro motion. Vibration of the vocal cords produces human voice. Have you heard the buzzing of the bees? How do you think the buzzing noise is produced? Now, let us perform simple activity to see how vibration produces sound. Take a rubber band and stretch it. Then pluck the rubber band. You will notice that the band vibrates and produces a sound. But how does the sound reach your ears? Sound travels from the point of its origin to the receiving end and to do so it needs a medium to travel. The substance or matter through which sound propagates is termed as medium. The medium can be solid, liquid or gas. As soon as an object is set on vibration it starts the vibration of the particles around it. A particle of a medium in contact with a vibrating object gets displaced from its equilibrium position. Then it exerts a force on its neighboring particles and displaces them from equilibrium. After displacing its neighboring particles, the first particle goes back to its original state of rest again. This process continues in the medium till the sound reaches your ear. Thus, a sound is a disturbance which travels through a medium when the particles of the medium set its neighboring particles into motion. These particles keep producing similar motions in other particles of the medium. The disturbance created by any source of sound propagates through the medium, but the particles of the medium do not travel. This is what happens during the propagation of sound and so it can be visualized as a wave. Sound waves are characterized by the motion of the particles in a medium and are called mechanical waves. 
The most common medium through which sound travels is air. When a vibrating object moves forward, it creates a region of high pressure by compressing the air in front of it. This is called compression. This compression moves away from the vibrating object. When the vibrating object moves backwards, it creates a region of low pressure, which is called rarefaction. The to and fro motion of a vibrating object creates a series of compressions and rarefactions in the air, which helps the sound wave to propagate through a medium. Compression is the region of high pressure, while rarefaction is the region of low pressure. Here, pressure is related to the number of particles of a medium in a given volume. Pressure becomes more when the density of the particles becomes more and the pressure becomes less when the density of the particles becomes less. Therefore, propagation of sound in a medium can be considered as the propagation of density variations or pressure variations in a medium. In this video, we got an introduction to production and propagation of sound. In the next video, we will learn about sound waves. Sound Part 2 Sound Wave In the previous video, we got an introduction to production and propagation of sound. In this video, we will learn about sound waves. Earlier, we studied that sound is a mechanical wave and it needs a material medium to travel. Now, let us conduct a simple experiment to understand the medium of sound better. Take an airtight glass bell jar and an electric bell. A vacuum pump is connected at the bottom of the bell jar. Suspend the electric bell inside the bell jar as shown in this image. Then press the switch and you will be able to hear the sound of the bell. Now start the vacuum pump. You will notice that the sound of the bell gradually becomes fainter. What do you think will happen when all the air is sucked out of the jar by the pump? Can you still hear the sound of the bell? Now let us perform another activity to understand the sound wave. Take a slinky and ask your friend to hold one of its ends. You hold the other end of the slinky. Stretch the slinky and then give a sharp push towards your friend. What did you notice? Some regions of the coils will become closer while some regions of the coils will become further apart. The closer regions of the coil are compressions and the further regions of the coil are rarefactions. Now, compare the propagation of disturbance in the slinky with the propagation of sound in a medium. These waves are termed as longitudinal waves. In these waves, the particles do not move from one place to another. They simply oscillate back and forth 
about their position of rest. The sound waves also travel like this. So, sound waves are longitudinal waves. There exists another type of wave known as transverse wave. The particles in a transverse wave do not move back and forth but they move up and down about the mean position in a direction perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave. One example of a transverse wave is light. But in light, the oscillations are not of the medium particles or pressure or their density as it is not a mechanical wave. Now, let us understand the characteristics of a sound wave. A sound wave can be described with the help of its frequency, amplitude and speed. Have a look at these images of a sound wave. It shows the variation in density and pressure of a sound wave at a given time with distance. The regions where particles are crowded are compressions. They are represented by the upper portion of the curve. The peak of the curve represents the maximum compression. Therefore, density and pressure are high in compressions. The regions of low pressure where particles are spread apart are rarefactions. They are represented by the lower portion of the curve. The peak of the curve is called crest and the valley is called trough of a sound wave. The distance between two consecutive compressions or two consecutive rarefactions is called wavelength. Wavelength is denoted by lambda. Its SI unit is meter. Whenever sound travels through a medium, the density of the medium changes from maximum value to minimum value and then again to maximum value, making one complete oscillation. The number of oscillations per unit time is the frequency of the sound wave. Frequency is denoted by nu. The SI unit of frequency is Hertz. It is named after Heinrich Rudolf Hertz, who laid the foundation for future development of radio, telephone, telegraph and even television. The time taken by one complete oscillation is the time period of the sound wave, which is denoted by T. The frequency and time period are related as nu is equal to 1 by t. Now, suppose a violin and a flute are played at the same time. Both the sounds travel through the same medium, air, and reach your ears. But why do you hear two different sounds? It is because of the different characteristics of the two sounds. One of those characteristics is the pitch of the sound. The way the frequency of a sound is interpreted by the brain is called its pitch. The faster the vibration, the higher the frequency. And the higher is the pitch of the sound. Therefore, a high-pitched sound corresponds to more number of compression and rarefactions passing through a fixed point per unit time. Objects of different sizes and conditions vibrate at different frequencies to produce sounds of different pitches. Now, when we tap a table lightly, we hear a soft sound. While when we hit a table hard, we hear a loud sound. Why do you think this happens? Think for a while. 
it happens due to the amplitude of the sound wave. The magnitude of the maximum disturbance in the medium on either side of the mean value is called the amplitude of the wave. It is denoted by A. For sound, the unit of amplitude will be that of pressure or density. As a sound travels from a source, its amplitude and loudness decreases. A louder sound can travel to a larger distance than a soft sound. The quality of a sound is the feature which helps us to differentiate between two sounds with the same pitch and loudness. A sound of a single frequency is called a tone and a sound which is a combination of several frequencies is called a note which is pleasant to our ears. Noise is the unpleasant sound which we hear, while music is pleasant and of a rich quality. In this video, we learned about sound waves. In the next video, we will learn about the speed of sound. Sound Part 3 Speed of Sound In the previous video, we learned about sound waves. In this video, we will learn about speed of sound. The speed of sound is defined as the distance which a point on a wave such as a compression or a rarefaction travels per unit time we have learned earlier, speed is equal to distance upon time. Here, speed of sound, V is equal to lambda upon T. We know lambda is the wavelength of the sound wave. Here, lambda is the distance travelled by a sound wave in one time period, T. We know nu is equal to 1 upon t. So, speed is equal to lambda multiplied by nu. Thus, speed is equal to wavelength multiplied by frequency. The speed of sound in a given medium remains the same for all frequencies under the same physical conditions. Now, let us solve a simple question. Suppose the frequency of a sound wave is 5 kHz and its wavelength is 40 cm. What will be the speed of the sound wave? Here, frequency nu is equal to 5 kHz is equal to 5000 Hz. Wavelength lambda is equal to 40. Centimeter is equal to 0.40 meter. Speed V is equal to nu multiplied by lambda, which is equal to 5000 multiplied by 0 0.40, which is equal to 2000 meter per second. Now, let us learn about the intensity and loudness of sound. Intensity of sound is defined as the amount of sound energy passing each second through an unit area. Sometimes, loudness is used in place of intensity. But science does not consider them the same. When we come across two sounds of the same intensity at the same time, we might find one sound louder than the other. It is simply because our ear detects one sound better than the other. Therefore, loudness is a measure of the response of the ear to the sound. Now, let us learn about the speed of sound in different media. Sound travels in a medium at a finite speed. The speed of sound depends on the properties of the medium through which it travels. 
when lightning strikes both the sound of thunder and flash of lightning occurs at the same time but the sound of thunder is heard after you see the flash of lightning it is because light travels faster than sound thus we can say that the speed of sound is less than the speed of light as we go from a solid medium to a gaseous medium the speed of sound decreases in any medium when we increase the temperature the speed of sound increases in air the speed of sound at 0 degree centigrade is 331 meter per second and at 22 degree centigrade is 344 meter per second Now have a look at this table which shows the speed of sound in different mediums at 25 degree centigrade Now do you know that the speed of some objects are more than the speed of sound An object with speed more than that of sound is said to travel at supersonic speed Can you give an example of an object with supersonic speed? Bullets and some jet aircrafts are some objects which travel at supersonic speed. When a sound producing source moves with a speed more than the speed of the sound, it produces shock waves in the air. These shock waves carry a large amount of energy. The air pressure variation associated with these shock waves produces a sharp and loud sound termed as sonic boom. The shock waves produced by the supersonic aircraft have the power to shatter glasses and even damage the buildings. In this video we learned about speed of sound. In the next video we will learn about reflection of sound echo and reverberation Sound part 4 Reflection of sound echo and reverberation In the previous video we learned about speed of sound In this video we will learn about reflection of sound echo and reverberation Reflection of sound in solid or liquid mediums is like a rubber ball which bounces off when hit on a hard surface Reflection of sound is similar to the reflection of light When a sound gets reflected at a solid or liquid surface it follows the same rules of reflection which are followed by light The directions in which the sound is incident and the sound is reflected make equal angles with the normal of the reflecting surface at the point of incidence and all three of them lie in the same plane An obstacle of a large size which may be smooth or rough is required for the reflection of sound waves. Now let us perform a simple experiment to understand the relationship between the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection. Take two identical pipes of sufficient length as such. Place them on a table near to a wall as shown in this image. Now place a clock or a vibrating mobile phone at one open end of one of the pipes. Then try to hear the ticking of the clock or vibration of the phone by placing your ear in the open end of the other pipe. To hear a clear sound of the ticking clock, adjust the position of the pipes as required. Now 
measure the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection of the sound and establish the relationship between them. Change the position of the pipe on the right by lifting it vertically and observe what happens. Now let us learn how reflection of sound produces echo. When you clap your hands near a reflecting surface like a mountain, you will get to hear the same sound a little later. This sound which we hear is called an echo. Why do you think echo occurs? Echo takes place as the sound is reflected back after hitting a reflecting surface. The sensation of sound persists in our brain for about 0.1 seconds. To hear a distinct echo, the time interval between the original sound and the reflected sound must be at least 0.1 seconds. Now, suppose the speed of sound in air at 22 degrees Celsius is 344 meter per second. The sound must hit the obstacle and reach to the ear of the listener after 0.1 seconds. So, the distance travelled by the sound from its source to the reflecting surface and back to the listener should be at least 344 meter per seconds multiplied by 0.1 second, which is 34.4 meter. So, to receive a distinct echo, the minimum distance between the source of sound to that of the reflected surface should be at least half of this distance, that is 17.2 meter. This distance will vary with the temperature of air. You can also hear echoes more than once when there are multiple or successive reflections. Due to this reason, rolling of thunder sound also occurs. The thundering sound undergoes successive reflections from multiple reflecting surfaces like the clouds and the land. Now, let us learn about reverberation. When we create a sound in a big auditorium, it persists for some time due to repeated reflections from the walls until it is reduced to a value where it is no longer audible. This repeated reflections that lead to the persistence of sound is called reverberation. In an auditorium or big halls, excessive reverberation is highly undesirable. Therefore, to reduce it, the roofs are mostly covered with sound absorbent material like compressed fiberboard, draperies or rough plaster. Even the material of the seats are chosen on the basis of their sound absorbing properties. Now, let us solve a simple problem together. Suppose you clapped your hands near a cliff and you heard the sound after 3 seconds. Calculate the distance travelled by the sound when the speed of sound v is taken as 320 meter per second. Here, speed of sound v is equal to 320 meter per second. Time taken for the echo to reach your ear is equal to 3 seconds. We know distance travelled by the sound is equal to V multiplied by T, which is equal to 320 multiplied by 3, which is equal to 960 meter. Now, what do you think is the distance between you and the cliff? We learned about multiple reflections. Now, let us see they are helpful in what ways. Megaphones, horns and musical instruments such as trumpets use multiple reflections. They are designed to send sound in a particular direction without spreading it in all directions. These instruments have a tube 
followed by a conical opening which reflects sound successively. It guides the sound waves from the source in the forward direction towards the audience. Stethoscope which is used by doctors to listen to the sounds of the heart and the lungs in the human body is another example of multiple reflection. Here the sound reaches the doctor's ear after going through multiple reflections. In this video we learned about reflection of sound, echo and reverberation. In the next video we will learn about sonar and ultrasound. Sound Part 5 Reflection of Sound Sonar and Ultrasound In the previous video, we learned about reflection of sound, echo and reverberation. In this video, we will learn about sonar and ultrasound. A human ear has an audible range of sound from about 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. Children under the age of 5 and some animals like dogs have an audio range of up to 25 kilohertz. People become less sensitive towards higher frequencies as they grow old. Now let us learn about the low range of sound which is not audible to human beings. Sounds of frequencies below 20 Hz is termed as infrasonic sound or infrasound. Elephants also produce sound in the infrasound range. Can you think of some other examples of infrasound? Now let us learn about ultrasonic sound. Sounds of frequencies about 20 kHz is called ultrasonic sound or ultrasound. Ultrasonic sounds are produced by animals like dolphins and bats. Moths have very sensitive hearing equipment due to which it can hear the higher frequency noise of the bat when it is nearby and take measures to avoid it. Do you know of any other animal that produces ultrasonic sound? Now let us learn about some applications which make use of the high frequency ultrasound. Ultrasound can travel along well defined paths even in the presence of obstacles. Ultrasonic sounds are extensively used in industries and in medical purposes. In industries, ultrasound is used to clean parts of instruments that are hard to reach. Like the odd-shaped parts, spiral tube, electronic components, etc. These parts are dipped in a cleaning solution and ultrasound waves are passed through it, which cleans the objects thoroughly. Ultrasonic sounds are also used to detect cracks and holes inside the metal blocks, which are invisible from outside. Like the metals used in the construction of ships, bridges and other scientific equipment. Ultrasonic sounds are passed through the metals to check the presence of any holes or cracks and detectors are used to detect any transmitted waves. Ordinary sound of longer wavelength cannot be used for these purposes as they bend around the corners of the defective locations and enter the detector. Ultrasound is made to reflect from various parts of the heart to form the image of the heart which is called echocardiography. Ultrasonic waves are also used in ultrasound scanners to take pictures of the internal organs like liver, kidney, etc. 
these waves are passed through the tissues of the body and then they are converted into electrical signals which are used to take images of the organs. These images are then printed on a film. This technique is called ultrasonography. Ultrasonic waves are also used to break small stones in the kidneys. Now, let us learn about a device which uses ultrasonic waves to measure distance, direction and speed of objects under water, which is known as sonar. Sonar stands for Sound Navigation and Ranging. The device consists of a detector and a transmitter and it is installed in a boat or a ship. The transmitter produces and transmits ultrasonic waves. These waves strike the objects on the seabed and get reflected back to the device which is then sensed by the detector. The detector converts the ultrasonic waves to electrical signals. The distance of the object that reflected the sound wave can be calculated by knowing the speed of sound in water and the time interval between the transmission and reception of the ultrasound. Suppose the speed of sound in water is V and the time interval between the transmission and reception of the ultrasound is T. Then the distance 2D travelled by the ultrasound can be written as 2D is equal to V multiplied by T. This method is known as echo ranging which is used to determine the depth of the sea and locate the sunken ships, hills, submarines, icebergs etc. Bats are experts at this. As we know, they emit ultrasonic waves. These waves get reflected from the obstacles or their prey and reach back to the bat's ears. The nature of the reflections help the bats in locating and catching their prey. In this video, we learned about sonar and ultrasound. In the next video, we will learn about the human ear. Part 6 Human Ear In the previous video, we learned about sonar and ultrasound. In this video, we will learn about the human ear. Earlier, we studied how sound is produced. Now, let us learn how we hear the sound. Humans hear sound with the help of an extremely sensitive device, the ear. The human ear allows us to convert pressure variations with audible frequencies to electrical signals. These signals travel to the brain through the auditory nerve. Now, let us learn about the auditory parts of the human ear and understand how it functions. Look at this picture of the human ear. As you can see in this picture, the human ear is mainly divided into three parts. The outer ear, the middle ear and the inner ear. The outer ear includes pinna and the auditory canal. The middle ear mainly includes three bones, the hammer, the anvil and the stirrup and the Austitian tube. The inner ear includes the cochlea and the auditory nerve. 
the pinna of the outer ear collects the sound from the surroundings and then it passes through the auditory canal. Then the sound reaches the eardrum or the tympanic membrane. Whenever a compression of the medium reaches the eardrum, it increases the pressure outside the membrane and forces the membrane inward. Similarly, when a rarefaction of the medium reaches the eardrum, it forces the eardrum outward. In this way, vibrations are produced by the sound in the eardrum. Then, the three bones, the hammer, the anvil and the stirrup of the middle ear amplifies the vibrations After that, the middle ear transmits the amplified pressure variations received from the sound wave to the inner ear. The cochlea of the inner ear turns the pressure variations into electrical signals. These electrical signals are sent to the brain through the auditory nerve and the brain interprets them as sound. And this is how human beings are able to perceive the sound around them. In this video, we learned about the human ear.